What's the earliest anime you remember hearing about? For me, it was the Bio Booster Armor Giver. First started in 1985 as a manga and still technically running today even though it's on a hiatus. It's had multiple anime OVAs as well as an anime series. And it's a series that I've really liked for a long time. Fortunately for me, last year they did reveal that they are releasing a new version which is taller, bigger and better in a lot of ways and we're going to take a look at that so as usual we'll be taking a look at the box and the figure how well it articulates as well as how well this figure is brought to life from the source material so let's stick around and we're going to get right into it so here's our figma 600 giver i think the slip case is a bit unusual i don't think most figmas have this now i did do the metroid dread and that one also had a slip case so i think they just kind of save it for special occasions and this is one of them being their 600th release as well as being their 15th anniversary release uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff so uh, it's really nice you can see that the gold on here is reflective so that's actually really nice uh, we have a nice picture of the figure uh, the side nothing special there on the back you can see more promo images of the figure as well as the accessories that it comes with taking it out you can see that it looks more like a typical figma release box uh, once it's out and it looks nice again we have a picture of the figure itself right there and another side of it on the back the same images that we saw in the slipcase right here just a little bit bigger and on the side we actually have this nice uh, art from the manga i believe and that looks really nice so we can see that this is what it's aiming to look like and i think it's going to be really close so i'm really excited about that here's the top side and the bottom shows the same thing let's get this guy open and before i get it the whole way open i do want to show that uh, if you've never opened a Japanese figure before, a lot of times, especially with these premium figures, you'll see that there's plastic not just around it, but like inside. So you can see there's this piece that's like in the knee, there's a piece that's between the waist, and then we've got a piece that's uh, within the torso, and that's to help protect it uh, during shipment because, you know, the pieces can potentially move around and uh, scratch up itself. So uh, I will remove those before fully taking it out. So before we get too far, I do wanna note that this thing retailed for about $90 US. I think as of right now, as of this recording, you can still find it not at retail, but local sellers are probably gonna be selling for around $130 to $150. And I like to start with the accessories. So as you can see, he comes with a stand and it looks like there are a couple of different models of stands because this one is one that I've seen before. It's a much older one, but the Metroid one came with this larger stand. So I don't know if that's because that they have a couple different types of stands or they just chose to go with this one for, I don't know, classic reasons. Of course, all figmas come with their own little baggie that you can put your figure into. We have a bit of an instruction manual with diagrams of uh, what you should receive in the box, as well as how to swap out parts and how the articulation should work. First up is the Giver unit itself. So this is what it looks like in the anime and in the manga uh, before it attaches to a human host. And that looks really good. Uh, that This doesn't do anything by itself, but it is a nice prop piece to have uh, just because it is really important to the character. Both of the blades on his forearms are swappable. And as you can see, they are marked for right and left because they are specific to which side that they go on. He also has his alt head that comes with his hand, which is supposed to replicate a uh, manga cover in particular but i don't believe this actually happens in the manga or anime but I, I can't remember for sure so if you know let me know in the comments below we have an extra peg for the hands and speaking of hands here's what we got so by default he comes with a pair of fists of course and then on here you can see that we've got gripping hands we have kind of open but still gripping hands we have uh open reaching hands and then we have these flat almost running hands a nice set of hands to have and all really well painted and well detailed. You can see the like the kind of the ribbing on the hands, uh, the way it's supposed to look, and that looks really good on there. As for the figure itself and the articulation, it's pretty nice. So I like to start at the feet, and that's what we're gonna do here. And you, starting with the ankle, you can see that we can come forward, and we can come up just a bit, but it's mostly that forward down motion that we have. We also have toe articulation, of course, and we have the ankle pivoting that we would expect to have. That's a nice amount of pivot. No calf swivel, uh, but we do have some nice double jointed knee articulation. So we can't get quite foot to butt. So that's a um, closer to a 45 degree uh, bend, but that still looks really good and gets you really far. And it's nice the way they do it because it blends in really well. And you can see that it's the those two pieces and how it splits down the middle like that. So you can barely tell that it's there when you do articulate. We also have a thigh swivel. And again, the design is well done in a way that it's 
kind of hard to tell that it's there, but you can see that it's right here is where the pieces meet. You can twist it like that to get your articulation. As far as our leg movement goes, we can go straight up, which is great. We can come out-ish, but then this armor plating gets in the way of any further articulation out, so you can't quite do the splits. However, if you twist the thigh outwards and then lift up, you can kind of do splits that way if that's something that you really need to do. Otherwise, the hip does appear to drop a little bit. I'm not sure if that's intended to be a drop hip or if that's just what's happening. Moving up to our waist articulation, we do have waist swivel, which is nice and seems to go all the way around. And I think the design here for the ab crunch is pretty well blended in and engineered because you can see the lines and then when you want to make them crunch, you make them crunch and he crunches pretty good. I like that. And that's the ab crunch, but then if you combine it with the uh, abdomen and chest articulation, then he can come that much more. So uh, lots of articulation there, which is really nice and really well done. And then speaking of this articulation, you can see that he goes left and right. It is on some kind of ball joint as well. And that's really nice. For our arms, we can go all the way around. Although it's a little bit scary to do that, but it does work and it's fine. And then we do have bicep swivel, which is great. We do have double jointed elbows. And as you can see, we can nearly get a hand to the shoulder, which is really good. The forearm itself also has its own level of uh, twisting and articulation there. Uh, both this joint and this can swivel independently. So let's see here if I can get that too. As you can see, that's moving on its own. So a lot of options there. The Sonic Blade also has its own level of articulation, though I'm not sure if that's intended for articulation or just there so that you can easily swap out the blade. But it can move if you really wanted it to. And our wrist articulation is pretty typical on a ball joint. Our shoulders have a butterfly joint here. Kind of see how it works because it's really from the, the backside how it works. And that works out really well actually and our arms can come straight out of course and yeah the, the way that they designed the piece and it all lines up right and it all looks really really good i really like that a lot for our head um what's cool is that this like line going up on both sides is actually a single piece and it actually moves with the head a bit so um it it's it's a different kind of plastic than the rest of it because it actually stretches just a little bit. But as you can see, we can turn uh, left and right with no obstructions, no problem. We can come down a bit. We can come up a bit as well. And this kind of neck to shoulder piece actually has its own a little bit of twisting if you need just a bit more articulation. A thing to note about the head blade is that while it looks sharp and it actually is a little bit sharp, it's actually also not as hard as uh, the Sonic Blade. So these are sharp as well and these are also a harder plastic. But this one is nice because it's actually a little bit malleable. So if you accidentally like tap it, then you shouldn't be too worried about it breaking. I obviously wouldn't recommend slamming it against anything, but you know, a minor drop shouldn't impact it too much. I'd be more worried about these hitting something because I'm worried that these might actually break. Last but not least, we have our chest cannon. So this side opens up and then this side opens up and that's super cool so i, I really like how that uh, works out i believe on the previous model you actually had to swap out the chest piece but now it's all just one single piece that's really cool a point of articulation that i really want to point out on this guy is that this is something that i try to do with a lot of my figures and i just can't do almost 99 percent of the time and it's the the idea that you can get you know one knee down one knee up and still being posed straight up like that to me that's fantastic and that's huge that's something that i just can't do with a lot of other figures now let's actually take a look at the actual design and the sculpt and all that good stuff and i would say i'm very happy with it i think it looks so incredibly good that's not to say that the previous release wasn't good but this is just really really good looking you can see just you know all the detail 
uh, and the time and the effort that, that they took to put into this, right? So just all of the panel lining that they put in there. I really like this back part, right? It just shows that, that even though we had this kind of like armor look that it's still this kind of organism bio thing, right? Cause it's, you know, the bio booster armor Giver and it shows that, and that looks awesome. I really enjoy that a lot. And looking at it compared to uh, just the manga and how it looks, I think that looks pretty darn spot on. And if you look at it compared to the anime, which is supposed to take its uh, notes from the manga, it also still looks very, very good. Now, comparing it to the first uh, manga cover, the colors look a little bit different, but I think over time it looks a little bit closer to uh, this one. But comparing it to the anime colors, it definitely looks pretty uh, spot on as well. Here's a close up of the head and i really love that level of detail just look so you can see that we've got this green gem there we've got the red gem over there the eyes look great and if you catch the reflection just right in the eyes you can see that it like it kind of glows a little bit right it's very shimmery in a very nice way all the paint apps for uh, where like the breathing parts are are really nice the metal bits in the uh, inside of the mouth like uh, that it looks metal but it's not necessarily metal in here uh, those look really good too in the story uh, this part this ball thing actually moves around it's something that he can use to kind of detect things uh, this obviously doesn't move but that's okay and I think having it kind of in that center position is a great place to have it overall it looks really really good and I really just love how much they put into the design the engineering to hide as much of the parts as they can to just make it as seamless as possible so that you kind of forget that you're looking at an action figure a lot of times now, unlike the uh, Figma Metroid figure, uh, you do see the hole for the peg, and that's not great, but that's not the worst thing either. But even still, everything else looks really good. And just so you can see, I'm going to just pull underneath here, and then it just loosens up, and then you just pull it right out. Nothing too difficult about that. And swapping that in, and that looks really good too. There's the completed head swap with special hand showing him kind of ripping off that part of his helmet. And again, I don't think that was something that ever actually happened in the manga or anime, but just something that made a really cool cover. But that's really cool that they're replicating that here. I really appreciate that. Now, the other thing to note about this release is that he is taller than the previous release and just a little bit smaller than an even older release than that. But I really like this height. I think uh, compared to the previous release, it's much better. The proportions are quite a bit better. But let's go ahead and take a look at how he looks next to a few other figures. So here he is next to Marvel Legends Iron Man. I forget which number it is, but I can tell you that this is the suit that he wears at the end of the Avengers film. And so you can see that he's a little bit taller than our Giver. However, I would also note that the Giver character himself is actually a high schooler. So it actually isn't totally unreasonable for him to be a little bit shorter. Here he is next to our Kotobukiya model kit in Mega Man. And this isn't really to scale to anything either, but I thought it'd still be interesting to uh, show a comparison. And I don't have a lot of anime character figures to compare them against, but here is Goku. Uh, this is a figureized model kit, and I think the heights on those look pretty nice. And because I have him close by, here is Kamen Rider Blade figureized model kit as well. And interestingly, he is a little bit shorter than the Giver is, uh, but otherwise I think still look pretty nice next to each other. Here's our Figma Metroid Dread Samus, and I think that's a nice comparison since they're both from Figma. And I don't know if Figmas are intended to actually be in scale with each other or not, but there you go, that's how those look. Here is Mezco Batman from the Justice League set that include Flash and Superman. And you can see, again, Guyver comes to be just a little bit shorter, but again, considering, you know, he is a high schooler, um, not too bad. And finally, here's a DC Multiverse figure. You can see, obviously, a way, way different scaling, so it doesn't match quite as nicely as the rest of our six inch scale figures. Now, if you like this figure, then you might want to check out the Metroid Dread review I already did, and I'll link that right here.